welcome to the epidemiology lecture series. Today we are going to talk about the association of prevalence of a disease with screening. If you search through YouTube or Google search, this is one of the most important topic that many epidemiologists discuss. Before proceed into this topic, I hope that you remember the previous lecture about sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value and negative predictive value. If you haven't watched that video, please go and watch that video because to learn this topic, you need to have the basic understanding of the previous topic. I hope that you remember this 2 by 2 table that we discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we calculated the sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value and negative predictive value as 80%, 60%, 40% and 90%. We calculated all these values based on this 2 by 2 table. Now, the next question is, what is the prevalence of disease in this specific sample? For this, we need an assumption. Let's assume that this 200 is the total population in that specific village. Or else, we can assume that this 200 is representative sample of the population. So let's assume this 200 is the total population. So what is the prevalence? When you are talking about the prevalence, we need to have the total number of patients in the specific sample. So the total number of patients is 50 because this is gold standard test positives. If you haven't watched the previous video, please watch that video because we discussed many things about this 2 by 2 table. Total number of patients, it's 50 and total population is 200. So, into 100. So, the prevalence of disease is 25%. Assuming that this is the total population or this 200 is a representative sample of total population. Okay, now assume that prevalence is only 10%. So if the prevalence is 10%, now we can fill this 2 by 2 table. We know that the total population is 200. There's no change in the total population. Now the prevalence is 10%. That means 10% out of 200 that is 20. So the total diseased people must be 20. Then the total non-diseased or healthy people must be 180. Now we have a problem. What will happen to sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value and negative predictive value? Sensitivity is if you are given 100 patients, how many of them can be identified using the specific screening test? Specificity, if you are given 100 negative patients, how many of them that you can identify using this specific screening test? Here in sensitivity and specificity, you are given 100 patients or a predetermined number of patients. So, there is no relationship of sensitivity and specificity with the prevalence. So, specificity and sensitivity will not change with the prevalence of disease. That is one of the most important thing we need to consider when we are discussing the association between prevalence and screening. As the sensitivity was 80%, it will not change even the prevalence is 10%. So, the sensitivity is 80%. 80% out of 20 must have identified by the screening test that is 16 so this must be 4 so 16 is 80% out of 20 the specificity was 60% if you calculate 60% out of 180 that is 108 Because of that, this is 72. So, total here is 88 
and here 112. So 88 plus 112, 200. So the 2 by 2 table is okay. Now our prevalence is 10%. What will happen to the positive predictive value and negative predictive value? Positive predictive value equals 16 divided by 88 into 100. I hope that you remember this formula that we discussed in the previous lecture. 18.1%. What will happen to the negative predictive value? Negative predictive value is 108 divided by 112 into 100 equals approximately it is 96.4 percent now what has happened to the positive predictive value and negative predictive value the previous positive predictive value was 40 percent so previous negative predictive value was 90 percent Now what has happened to the positive predictive value? Positive predictive value is decreased when the prevalence is low. Negative predictive value is increased when the prevalence is low. Why is that? Okay, think about yellow fever. Yellow fever is a common disease, endemic disease in African countries. You can't see any yellow fever cases in Japan. Now think that you apply a screening test to detect yellow fever in Japan and you get about, about 5 patients positive for yellow fever in Japan and you are pretty much sure that there are no yellow fever in Japan. So all positives are false positives. That means when you are trying to identify low endemic disease, low prevalent disease, it is difficult to catch positive patients. So when the prevalence is going down, the positive predictive value is also going down. If I remember you again, positive predictive value is if there are 100 positives, how many of them have the disease? So to have more positives in a low endemic setting, if you have more positives, the probability of having disease is low. That's why when the prevalence is low, positive predictive value is also low. What has happened to the negative predictive value? Negative predictive value is if there are 100 negatives, how many of them are free of disease? In such case, when we are investigating low endemic disease, there is high probability to catch negative patients. So when there are 100 negatives, there is high probability to have negative patients or true negatives because of low endemicity. I hope now you are clear what will happen to the positive predictive value and negative predictive value when the disease prevalence is low. So let's consider what will happen if the prevalence is high. Okay, now our prevalence is 50%. In the first example, our prevalence was 25%. In the second example, our prevalence was 10%. Now it is 50%. As you remember, sensitivity and specificity will not change with the prevalence of disease. So sensitivity will remain at 80% and specificity will remain at 60%. So let's see what will happen to the 2 by 2 table. As you remember, the total population will not change as 50%. The prevalence is 50%, total number of deceased will be 100. 50% out of 200 is 100. Because of that, total number of healthy will be 100. As sensitivity will not change, sensitivity is 80%. 80% out of 100 is 80. Because of that, here it's 20. Specificity is 60%. So here it is 60, 60% 60 of, out of 100, because of that it's 40 and 120 here, 
and 80 here. 120 plus 80, 200. Correct. Okay. Let's see what will happen with the positive predictive value and negative predictive value with the higher prevalence. Positive predictive value here is 80 over 120 into 100 which equals 66.6% and negative predictive value is 60 over 80 into 100 which is 75%. With the higher prevalence, the positive predictive value is increased, the negative predictive value is dropped. Okay, let's compare sensitivity, positive predictive value, specificity and negative predictive value with the prevalence of disease. As I said earlier, sensitivity and specificity are independent of the disease prevalence. Because of that, 80%, 80%, 80%. Sensitivity has not changed. Specificity, 60%, 60%, 60%. Not changed. What has happened to the positive predictive value? When the prevalence is increased, positive predictive value is also increasing here with the increase in prevalence. Negative predictive value, you can see, when the prevalence goes up, negative predictive value goes down. 96, 90 and 75. Here, the other way around. 18.18%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%